What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're back in the garage. We got the truck back in here and this time we're fixing the suspension. Uh, this thing's got not a whole lot of miles on it, but it's got a whole hell of a lot of rust on it because, you know, dodge things. So what I found is the ball joints on her toast, the wheel hub bearing on it shot too. Uh, for whatever reason on this side, we got a brand new rotor and new pads. So that's uh, one up for the game. Uh, the other side, not so much. So what we're going to do, we've got I mean, obviously a new rotor here, new pad. So those are going back on. But we've got upper control arm with the new ball joint, lower control arm with the new ball joint. We're going to get a new shock. We're also going to get a new uh, wheel hub assembly. I figure, you know, if we're in here, we might as well go ahead and replace everything and make it all nice and new. Probably pull the sway bar off. Um, I've got a whole new sway bar in link bushing kit and all that good stuff because this one uh, it's kind of working on the wi-fi setting i guess i don't know what they got going on i'm assuming that was holding everything together so i think i trust new parts rather than a coat hanger holding all that stuff on there but <clears throat> this project um i did the other side wasn't terrible but it did kind of suck so hopefully this side will go a lot smoother uh, I did go ahead and get it up on a jack stand. Took about three hours to bang the old tire off because for whatever reason they pretty much weld themselves on. As for the parts, like I said, we've got new sway bar in links, new bushings. I've got an upper control arm with the pressed in ball joint already and a whole brand new lower control arm with the same thing, pressed in ball joint. Um, what I did was I found there's a company called Torque. You can see them right here. Uh, they sell kits online. I believe I ordered all this through Parts Geek. I will double check myself. You can get lower control arm, upper control arm, bushing kit, and also get um, your tie rod ends and all that. You can get all that as a kit. I had already purchased the sway bar inlink kit, so I didn't need this. So I went with the kit that was basically two new uppers, two new lowers. That was about, I want to say about $450 for everything. Um, if you need all the parts combined, they do sell a complete kit. The price on it is very affordable. Um, rather than, you know, banging all these things out and putting new ball joints in, I figured the control arms that are originally on there, they're rusted completely through. There are a lot of bad spots in them. So for the price, I got new lower, new upper. We got that. Everything should be good. Um, went in fairly smooth painted everything while I was in there to make it look you know I guess somewhat fresh so we're just gonna copycat that side to this side and I figured go ahead and show you guys what's involved in doing it so let's get started
you turn off for? Oh, sweet. All right, well, everything's out. All I did here was just shot some good old rattle can stuff just to make it look pretty for now. It is a Dodge, so probably five minutes from now it'll be a big old pile of rust. Uh, the lower control arm bolts, one was here, one was here. This one here was a nightmare. Luckily, as soon as I cut it out and I jumped online to see if I could buy a new one, uh, it's discontinued. So we're gonna have to figure out something with that. Uh, we'll probably be making a trip to the local parts store. I uh, gotta get the new bearing assembly for this. We'll just try to get this here cleaned up. Um, I've tried spraying it with like degreasers and stuff to get it decent looking, but it never really works out. Uh, so, but we will clean out the surface here for where the new bearing sits. I will see if we have some kind of a bolt that we can put back in there for the lower control arm. But other than that, everything did come out pretty easy, except for that one bolt. And uh, we'll go ahead and start getting our new parts, getting it all put back on there. I am going to replace the tie rod end. I think what I might do is put it all together and then when I take it out and have it aligned, I'll let them do it because they're gonna have to take it off anyway to readjust it. Uh, we'll get the sway bar off, get that all cleaned up. I got new bushings going in there, but so far so good. I still have to address the uh, one bolt that's way up in there that just happened to be falling out for some weird reason. Nothing that I did. It's a Dodge thing. Bolts just fall off. But as for everything up here, we're going to go ahead and run to the parts store, get everything we need, and uh, see if we can start putting new stuff back in there. All right, so we're back from the parts store. Shout out to my guys down there at O'Reilly's. You guys always take care of me when I need it. What we got here, standard Monroe gas shock. Uh, nothing special with this guy. And then we've got, let's see if I can get this thing open. Brand new wheel hub assembly. Spins very nicely. Now the big thing to remember on this is, this is the passenger side. If you're gonna get, this is a Master Pro from O'Reilly's. That's the part number for the passenger side. Now the driver's side ends in 073 is the one you're gonna want. And that one comes with the ABS sensor uh, already put in it. Now this one, as you can see, if I can get it out. Ugh. All three sides here, there is no wheel speed sensor on the passenger side. So you got to make sure you get this one right there. If you're getting this Master Pro version, this is the passenger side. Now the driver's side has the ABS sensor in it. So if you get the wrong part, you're not going to have a speed sensor on there. So make sure you get the right one. I goofed up myself. So we got that. Still got to clean that out, get that thing set up. We'll get the new bearing put in there, get that all tightened up. The paint's drying very nicely. And we can start putting the control arms back in, get everything put together. Uh, I did run to down to my local Ace. They don't sell the factory bolt, uh, but they do sell this one. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna put this in it for the time being, or 100,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. 
Uh, hopefully I can go and get the correct bolt for it. Uh, this is discontinued, so this is gonna be tricky. Um, so like I said, until then, this guy's gonna ride or die for at least 100,000 miles. I'm kidding. It's only until I can get the right one. Or am I? So, uh, the brakes on this side are new, so we're just gonna reuse the pads. And then he's got a brand new rotor over there we're gonna put right back on it. Uh, driver's side, everything on the driver's side was replaced. But like I said, this side here, it's still new. Um, the guy that stole it just put this on there not too long ago. So, shout out to the dead guy. Let's get this thing back together. We'll get it back on the ground. And uh, hopefully this project will be just about wrapped up. So the three bolts that hold your wheel bearing hub assembly to the knuckle need to be torqued to 120 foot-pounds. Size of those bolts, 18 millimeter. So one thing I'm going to do on this bolt here I'm going to put a little thin layer of anti-seize on this just so that we don't have the same problem that we had on the other one. The other one, the temporary one, I'm not going to put anything on. I'm not planning on moving this truck very much until that new bolt comes in. Uh, I did order it from a, a website online, so hopefully that will show up soon. but. We'll get the uppers in, we'll get the lowers in. We're gonna go ahead and torque everything down, except for this one here. That way I can just come in, pop this one out, pop the new bolt in, torque it down, and we should be good to go. We're gonna do the same thing for the upper bolts. Nice little thin layer of anti-seize. So we're not going to go too crazy with trying to align things uh, from where they were previously because you can adjust these in and out which will adjust all your suspension. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the alignment guy do all that but for now we're going to get everything hooked up, tightened up and then when they do the alignment they can come in here and make all their final adjustments. We're going to go ahead and torque down the upper control arm uh, nuts. These go to 125 foot pounds. Upper ball joint mount gets torqued to 60 pounds. Lower nut goes to 110 foot pounds. Alright, for those of you paying attention here, you'll notice that this is now underneath the sway bar. Uh, if you want to go ahead and rewind, you'll see that this was on top of here this whole time, and I'm an absolute moron. 
So took these bolts out, dropped it down, uh, flipped this underneath. I am taking this out anyway because I do have new bushings and new end links for it. Um, and I do want to just put a little coat of paint on there and make it look nice and pretty. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get this on. We'll get the rotor back on, put the brake caliper back on, and uh, should be good. All right, everybody, so that's going to do it for this project, and I will tell you, this project sucked. Uh, would I do it again? Probably not. Um, the other side went decent. This side was a little bit tougher, uh, especially with that, with the lower bolt down here on the control arm, not one to come out. Um, but yeah, that, that absolutely did suck, and I probably won't do it again. The truck will probably get sold before that happens. But the only reason that I did it was because the original ball joints on this thing were absolutely toast. You could just grab the wheel and move it all over the place. So how they were driving on it that way, I don't know. I mean, I could probably drive it five miles down the road and both the tires would fall off. But, you know, they had it before and they were driving it for, you know, months that way. But anyway, besides the point, um, this side here, like I said before, passenger side, uh, the guy that stole it put a uh, new rotor and new pads on it. On the other side, I did put everything new. So that side was all looked like original. The pads on it were toast. New control arms, new ball joints. We got new shock in there, just a standard Monroe shock. Um, new wheel bearing, uh, hub assembly, and then new pads and new rotors. You know, as far as the other driver's side goes, passenger side, these are already new-ish, but they should be okay. I did notice on the caliper on this side, it looks like the pistons on it are pretty smashed up. So whoever tried to do this before, instead of just pressing the pistons back in, uh, they decided to beat the crap out of them. So caliper replacement will probably be in the future for this thing, but not right away. I'm going to see how it goes. I didn't notice any kind of weird feeling out of it, but it will need to be replaced, just not right now. Uh, as far as everything else... Shot a nice little rattle can paint job on her to make it look good. Get rid of some of the rust. I don't know what all this is, but we'll see if that comes out at a later date. But other than that, whole suspension's looking good. The tie rods, like I said, we are going to replace these, but we're going to do it when we take it out to the alignment shop. So all I'm going to do for now is just snug this down so I got a little bit of steering in it so I can get it up on the trailer and then get it out to that guy. But before we do that, we got to tackle the rear of this thing. I do have the uh, rear spring flip kit, so it'll put the spring from the top of the axle to the bottom. My goal is to just drop this thing down to where the front and rear sit level with each other, just to give it a little bit of a sportier stance. Um, I just don't like the way it sits because these things, they, they sit so high on the back, it just looks goofy to me. So we're going to bring the back down, make it nice and level, make it look pretty cool. And then we got to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of this thing. Um, like I said, every panel on this thing is, has got some kind of damage to it, so I don't know. Is it really worth going through and fixing everything on it, or should I just drive this thing? I don't know. I am looking at getting a different set of rims and tires for it. That'd be cool with it sitting a little different, but all that just kind of depends on what I can find. So, oh, as for this, everything's nice and new. It looks good. Can't wait to get it out on the road, see how it feels. But for now, we're going to get the tires back on, get this thing off the jack stands. I do have to turn it around so I can work on the rear end and uh, get that suspension taken care of on that. I can't wait to dive into that rusty mess back there. Um, if it's anything like this side on the front, this is going to be a nightmare. So 
we'll just see how it goes. But I'm gonna get the tire back on, get this thing off the jack stands, and uh, I'm gonna call it a night because this thing it it beat me up pretty good. So, you guys, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.